Hello folks, Fluorescent Thief here and welcome to Jinxing Jonas the series where you guys set challenges for the best player in the game and so far he passes them with relative ease. Can we keep it going though? This is episode 4 and the challenge for this one, which is one I suggested originally and was taken up by Shorts226, is to build a team entirely from packs and see if Jonas can score within said team. So the packs I opened were the premium gold jumbo packs when they are available what will be yesterday if you watch this on the day this was uploaded the 15,000 coin packs and the first pack I got one cracker of a card you'll see it flash up in just a moment there you go Geordie Alba what a brilliant card to get us started and even alongside that you might see on the right hand side there was a Ramirez there as well and even a 76 rated centre midfielder called Parejo who's a Valencia teammate of Jonas Really good set of cards to get me going because that should help my chemistry a fair bit. All out of formation slightly, but it's not too bad. Second pack, I get another couple of decent cards. You'll see flash up there, Steve and Gerard. Good card, doesn't really fit in with the, the actual team much, but still not a bad card to have. And I do get a ton of left midfielders, which isn't very helpful because I'm using a 4-2-3-1 formation and there's no room for any of them. Rest of the pack, not great. I did get a uh, Argentinian Cam who will fit in because he's also a La Liga player. And the third and final pack that I decided to open was nowhere near as good, really. Although I did finally get a couple of defenders because I, I had 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 barely any defenders so far. And you can see two more left midfielders. No real standout players in that one, although there were a couple of good consumables inside it. Anyway, the long uh, the sorry the upshot I should say is that this was the team I ended up with. Castellazzi, I think is how you say his name in goal, from Inter. Left back, Jordi Alba, easily the best card I got out of the three packs. Left centre back, I had to put a right back in, because I only got one centre back in, in three packs, who's this guy from the German league. Wes Brown alongside him, and alongside him is Buxton, a right back from Sheffield Wednesday. Left central midfield, Parejo, good card. Valencia team out of Jonas, that will help my chemistry no end. And alongside him, Ramirez in the right central mid position, or right CDM I should say. Brazilian, so also a good link. That guy whose name I can't say and I'm not going to try. Also a La Liga player, so I ended up quite lucky in getting a sort of La Liga left side. Steven Gerrard on the right, good player but doesn't really fit in apart from with the right back. And Borriello, the striker up front. And as you can see, the bench was filled with... Left midfielders, pretty much. Left midfielders and cams. It wasn't a brilliant bench. As per usual, I am using full manual controls for all these challenges. And this was the team I came up against first up. A French league team, and managed by Arsene Wenger. Not the most amazing team in the world, so in theory, I might have a chance. So my overall team chemistry in the end, once I'd put all that together, was 53. And for those of you unfamiliar with Ultimate Team, chemistry is a huge deal. And I really noticed it in this game because for the first 35 minutes I couldn't get anything going at all it was such a struggle but suddenly out of nowhere Jonas does one turn does another smashes his shot hits the post so unlucky that would have put us right up there with the fastest time so far but it wasn't to be however he's coming straight back again just about manages to get through a tackle makes space shot blocked unfortunate and as I was saying, yeah, chemistry, it's amazing how much difference it makes because I haven't used a what I would call a low chemistry team for months, maybe even more than a year, probably not since very early in FIFA 12. I've always just been used to having 100 chemistry, or at the very least, at least 90 chemistry. And if you've not tried a low chemistry team, well, not that I would encourage you to try it because it's horrible, but it is amazing how different it feels, even on manual where you're still sort of mainly responsible for everything that goes on. Your movement's all over the place, players make bad runs, they're just out of position, it's it's horrible. So I was forced into this kind of thing a lot, just trying to do things all on my own with Jonas, instead of being able to create passing opportunities and a great bit of skill, but just about, man just about manages to block it again. So I was managing to make a couple of chances, but pretty much entirely due to Jonas dribbling. I couldn't really get a, a team move together to give him a an easy tap-in or something like that. And uh, my opponent there, Mr. King Odom Wingy, which is an interesting uh, game attack. Getting through with some first-time passes, keeper saved it, and then he smashes a shot wide. 
But basically, I was to pay for my profligacy, I suppose, because he did finally get a goal. It had been coming because there was an awful lot of real last-ditch defending going on from me. I was having to dig in and just try and cling on for a lot of the game. However, straight from the kickoff, Jonas decides to go on another run, having to try and do everything himself all over again. Make space, but another shot blocked. And ultimately, that was to be the last of my chances in this game. As he swings across in, eventually. Bit of a weird one. Almost scores an unbelievable scissor kick, and then gets a penalty for absolutely nothing. Nonsense decision, but he slots it away, and that is how the game finished. 2-0 to him, but remember... That doesn't matter. We just keep going and keep going until Jonas gets his goal. So for the second game, I ended up against this funky Russian-German-Belgian hybrid kind of thing. Players from all over the shop. An Anderlecht front three, I think it was. And in terms of the team, I actually got off to a pretty good start. Long ball, head it down. Ramirez puts it in the corner. But the problem is, that doesn't actually mean anything within the context of the challenge. Because it's Jonas who has to score, not Ramirez. Anyway, Jonas plays a brilliant ball to Steven Gerrard, who apparently has 99 shot power on Ultimate Team. I didn't know that. And it showed, because he walloped that absolutely miles over the bar. went into orbit. And this was another game where I was making chances and making opportunities. Here, I really should have done a better cross. That was a big chance wasted. But it was another one where I, I was just about managing to make chances, but... Even though you won't sort of see it yet, there was an awful lot of real last-ditch defending. I was having to make tackles really late on. He didn't actually manage to get that many shots off against me, to begin with, anyway. But he um, he did cause me a lot of problems, and I was losing the ball so often. My pass accuracy in, in these two games was all over the place. Here, a big chance for Jonas, but I tried to shoot, and the shot just doesn't come off. I want to mention something quickly about... Uh, this series, the second episode of this series that I did, I decided to talk about myself for a bit because some of you had been asking whether or not I'd do that, and it seemed to prove quite popular. So what I'm thinking for the the future episodes of this series is, if you guys want to set me a specific topic to talk about, or if you want to know more about me, or if you want to say, ask me questions, I could do a Q and A kind of thing on these videos. Then feel free in the comments below to to suggest you your questions or your topics or whatever. And I can do those in future future episodes if, if you guys are keen on that. Because if that's something you're keen to see, then um, I don't see why I shouldn't do it. Back to this game. He gets his equaliser. He just bursts away with pace. And there's nothing I can do about it. I just <laughs> You saw that I have a very makeshift defence. I have not got brilliant players at the back. But it doesn't matter because all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Jonas exchanges a 1-2, takes a touch, smashes a shot in the corner of the net. Stop the clock at long last. 68th minute of the second game. 158 minutes plus stoppage it took for Jonas to finally get his goal. But he did get it in the end and it was very well taken indeed. And I was hoping, praying, that I could hold on for a win in this game. Not that it matters. The challenge is passed regardless. But he gets a breakaway and somehow, I don't know how, that manages to squeeze through my defender and the keeper and end up in the back of the net. So, two all, but there was still time. There was still a chance as I get a free kick, 25 yards from goal. Who else but Jonas steps up. It's the post again. I was really not being very lucky in this game. Things were not going my way. And in extra time, it all just completely fell apart. He turns away from my defender, smashes a shot. It just, it just goes through my keeper, who just falls under it. And that's 3-2 to him, and at this point the floodgates just completely opened. I lost the plot at this point. My defence went to pieces. I stand off for far too long here. Don't get close enough, given the space, to smash it into the far corner. It's a pretty good goal, in fairness. That was 4-2, and there was yet another one to come, unfortunately. He did make it 5 late on with another similar kind of shot from the edge of the box. But it doesn't matter. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter within the context of the series because Jonas did get his goal. 5-2 is how it finished. A bit of an embarrassing scoreline in the end. Very harsh, though, because I really thought I had done enough to win it in normal time. But it wasn't to be, and Jonas was the best player on my team. Surprise, surprise. So if you guys enjoyed this video, it would be great if you could leave me some feedback. Click the usual stuff if you're new to my channel, if you can subscribe, and all that kind of thing. 
I have got a load of challenges saved up, so if you want to set me a challenge, you can, but as I say, I've just got so many to do or to get round to, that it'll probably be a long time before yours is done. And as I said, also, if you can, or if you're interested in knowing more or asking questions or giving me topics to talk about specifically, feel free to just suggest them in the comments below the video, and I can always uh, have a look at doing them in a future episode. So, thank you for watching the best player in the world, show why he's the best in the world once again. I'll be back with another one of these soon enough, but in the meantime, play manual.